Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at yarnspirations.com. Just a piece of paper today because I want to show you a concept that I'm working through in my brain. I want to do a log cabin format where literally I will start off with a big C to C square and then I will move on and do number two. So you'll be joining it as you go to the square plus then making more in order to do the next one. So once these two are done and they're connected, you are then going to start number three and you're going to work your way down and make extra. And then number four comes in and then number five comes in and attaches to this one. So every time you complete a round like this, you're back to a square again. So number six, you would start here, seven, eight, and nine. So what I'm gonna to recommend to you today is that you're gonna start off with a beginning square. Now, I'm not gonna teach you this from a beginner's perspective on learning how to hold the hook and all that stuff with C to C. I'm going to assume that you know how to do C to C, but what I'm gonna concentrate on is doing the log cabin format, just like you have here. I'm going to give you a tip just to get yourself started, and then I'll be back after my first box is complete. So I'm going to begin and I wanna just start with you on camera so that you can do what I'm about to do so that you have consistency within your look. I want you to chain your, your six like you normally would. And I'm gonna put in the video description uh, starting tutorials for C to C just in case you don't know what those are or how to do this concept. And the reason why I wanted to start off here in the video is that I need to put in a stitch marker at this point. So after you get the first row done here, before you continue, I want you to get a spare piece of yarn. You only have to do the middle box. And I want you to come in and just go around the post, loop it, and pull it through. And my goal is, is that every time I see it like this, I'm looking at the right side of the work. So whenever I start the other rectangles that go in, this side should always be facing up towards me and the other side, it would not. So this would be the wrong side. So I'm going to do um, my middle square as 15 boxes by 15 boxes. And then that's where I'm going to uh, pick you up at the end of that. And I will start you on showing you how to put on number two and then three and etc. So let's do that. So please do your beginning square. You can do any size that you want to. Um, I'm just gonna do 15 by 15 boxes for myself. So I'm back with my first square done. It is 15 boxes by 15 boxes. It's completely square. So I'm going to bring back here. I color coded it differently than what you saw yesterday. Um, I've been filming this over two days. So I have the middle square done and I'm only gonna use the middle square to be the off weight, just like you see. And I had Daniel go through colors uh, in my yarn room to do the rest of this. So he says, you know, you should really be thinking about fall, think about cottage because this is a log cabin concept. So what we did is we pulled five different colors the reason why I wanted to do five is that I never want the same color to overlap each other at any point. So if you have five colors, it means that one color will be used as a way to be able to shift around the colors a little bit easier. So I'm going to start off with my first color and my first color will be pumpkin. And so I will show you all the colors that I'm gonna be using today. The first color will be pumpkin. The next color will be taupe. The next color will be deep violet. The next color will be forest green. The last color will be medium gray mix. Now I'm just gonna mix up the colors and see how it turns out and make decisions on the fly on where things are gonna go as I'm doing it. Let's begin to doing the rectangle for number two. With the first square done, we're going to build out and move to number two. So number two, we're going to join here. We're gonna build it up. And then when we get over here, we're gonna have an overhang. So three will not exist yet. So what I'm going to decide to do is that I put 15 boxes by 15. I'm gonna make these each five boxes high. And when I go all the way across, there will be five boxes after this point that will go in. So I will keep it like that. If you wanna change the number of boxes and the height, you can do that at any time and make these a little bit thicker. You can decide anything that you would like to do, even if you wanna make it so that they're not actually matching each other um, exactly, like you can have different shapes as well. You, you are the artist at the end of the day, but this is my design. So I'm going to just stick with what I've already planned, but if you'd like to change it, be my guest, because you are the artist at the end of the day. Let's start and do box number two, and I'm gonna be using pumpkin. As we start this process, make sure the right side is facing up towards you. So if it looks like this, it means that it's the underside. So I want you to continue along and just pick any corner. It doesn't matter which one. And I'm just gonna start and I'm gonna create a slip knot and place this onto 
my hook. So I am going to start right in the very corner. So start in an anchor right in the corner itself. And then you are going to attach. You'll have to weave in your ends later. So you'll attach it. And then you're going to chain a total of six. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. Right, right where you're pinching, just move your thumb back and just do the double crochet for that one, plus the two more that you will have. Okay, once you have that done, where are you gonna go from here? You're going to attach it as you go. So what you need to do is see how each of the boxes are separate from each other. You wanna play within the separation spots. So you're going to slip stitch right in between this, the two boxes here and pull that through. So just slip stitch. Now we have to build up. So what we need to do is we need to get ourselves over here first. So we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to slip stitch in between these two boxes. And this will be the start of the next row. You're gonna flip it upside down. You're gonna chain three, so one, two, three, and only use that chain three space of the same color. And you're gonna put three double crochet in there. So you're doing C to C as you normally did. It's just you're starting to be able to join it to the next one without doing sewing is a lot easier. You're gonna come in to the space and you're just gonna make it bigger. So you're just gonna keep on going until you get five boxes high. So chain three, and this is the outside box. So just put in two double crochet into the, the piece there, and then into the anchor spot to hold it to the outside. You're gonna turn your work back in the other direction. And so this side has nothing to attach to because it is box number two. So you're just going to start again. So chain six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, do that one where your thumb was pinching on the third and double crochet back. And then you're going to do your C to C as you normally would have done it. So you just wanna pay attention to the one that's going to attach to the next square when you get there. So you're already three boxes high at this point. So you do your last one here. And then you come up to the next one. So just kind of pull it up. You can see that it will match. So you're going to slip stitch here and you want to start another box. So you, to do that, you're going to chain three first and then you're going to jump to the next space right here and then flip your work over, and then you keep on going. So one, two, three, and then you're gonna use that same space to come back across. So this side, when you get there, you have to determine if you're going to make more boxes or you're gonna stop making more boxes and start the decrease on this side. In my case, I want five boxes high, so I have one, two, three. So I'm going to attach here and make another box. This will give me my fourth. And then I do my end box like I normally would have. Okay, turn your work. So now you have four boxes high. And now this next row is gonna create the fifth box to be high. So you're just gonna chain three. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. And then you're going to just work your way back across. So this will be the last time that you're ever doing an increase on this side 
when you cut back here again, you'll be doing a decrease stitch and I'll show you that when we get there. So now you're just going to go all the way back and now you, and then you attach and I'll meet you here to make sure that you're attaching right and then we'll come back. So please continue. So to recap, when you're just coming to the edge here, make sure you fill in the final box. Okay, you slip stitch up here. And to carry on to make a new row, you're just gonna chain three, slip stitch to the next space between the next set of boxes, and then flip over. So this time when we get back up, we're gonna create a decrease on this side so that we're just gonna start then working like that. So just chain three right where you are, put in your three double crochet and CC till you get near to the end of the line and I'll pick you up there in a moment. So just put me on pause now. So when I get up here, I can see that I'm five boxes high, one, two, three, four, five. So I don't wanna create any more boxes on top of this one. So this is the last box that we'll be going in right now. So you'll put in your three double crochet, uh, sorry, your chain three and then three double crochet into the same spot. And then to anchor, I want you to come in to, don't go into a space, go into the chain work itself and that'll hold it out so that you end up having a nice flat edge to work with in the future. So when you start a new row, you're no longer having anything, so you don't wanna chain six anymore and you wanna slip stitch across the tops of the double crochets that you have. And you wanna slip stitch into a chain work itself, not to a space. So this is what they call a decrease because you're no longer increasing. And so it's decreasing on this side, increasing on this side. So you'll chain three and put in three double crochet and continue to CC or sorry, um, CC, I don't know what that means. Continue to uh, um, do the C to C uh, formation until you get to the attaching point on the other side. And all you're just gonna do is work your way back and forth all the way down the idea. And I'm gonna meet you at this point here. So you're just gonna continue to build it. And then we're, we need to do five boxes after this point into midair so that we have something to play with in the future. So please continue to go all the way across the side of your C to C middle box. So because this is coming up close to the end of here, this is box number two. So anytime you start a new round, you'll have the same situation where you'll come across, but you need to build out an overhang so that at least uh, the rest of this project will work together. So you're just going to continue to do your last box as you normally would. But in this case, we want to still build out the rows, so we don't want to start decreasing exactly at this point. So coming to the top here, so if this is the end, just come into the top of the anchor point. And now what we have to do is start an increase on this side so that we can continue to build outward, but we're continuing our decrease on this side. So just flip it upside down and let's start a new uh, row. And so you're going to chain six, so one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six, and then just move your thumb back. So it's like you're starting a brand new square completely, but you're just building onto the existing one that's already in play. Okay, you're going to flip up and attach. And when you get up to here, you're going to do your decrease like you normally would. Okay, so you're just gonna get up there, slip stitch over and then back down. And so you're gonna continue to increase on this side and I will see you. So come on up, do your decrease to keep your flat side here. And then I'll meet you back down here in a few seconds from now. So I'm coming up here and I'm not ready to start decreasing yet because I wanna build more boxes out. There's gonna be a total of five in this direction. So you just chain up three, you'll add another box. So this makes it two boxes and just, and it's the final box in the side. So make sure you do anchor it, turn your work. And when you start a new row again, you're chaining your six and then you'll create a new box, which will take you to three. So what I'll do is I'll just keep going back and forth until I can count five boxes completely from the edge of this piece right here. And I'll be back in a moment. I continue to build it out and I can count five boxes, one, two, three, four, five, which is what I want because I have five boxes across. 
From this point, I want to decrease now, just like you would have been if it was the square. So you're just going to start off and you'll slip stitch like you have been to keep the side going. And the other side, you're going to be introducing the, fir the first corner to do the corner to corner, I guess. So you're just going to chain three and double uh, put three double crochet in. So what you're going to do is treat the other side like you're treating this side right now. So when you get here, you just stop, right? You don't increase any more boxes. So the last box that will be going here will be right here. And then you're gonna continue slip stitch and then continue to build it and you'll get less and less. So I will get there in just a few seconds and I'll just recap that really quick and I'll be right back. So this will be my last box going in here. So just chain up three and put your three double crochet in here. And this will cause this side to start creating its shape right here. So just slip stitch it to the anchor. And so you can see the corner was officially done and then turn slip stitch over and then start and just continue to go along and you'll finish off in a corner. So please do that. And then we're going to move on to box number three in a moment. So I'm coming up to my last box. I'm gonna anchor it. Just for my own, the way that I do it, even though I'm technically done here, I like to turn it and just slip stitch myself to the anchor spot because it'll make the edge look the same by doing such a thing. You decide if, uh, how you wanna do it. You're the artist, as I mentioned. So you're just gonna do that and finish off and we'll recap in a second. So I've now just finished this. It looks like the diagram. This here, I've just got to fold it up so you can see the right side is facing up in my case. So I want to make sure that's always facing up when I go to start a new color. So because this is the first time around, the next color will start right here and I need to start right in the corner. So let me take you back to the diagram that I have and explain then three, four, and five because three, four, and five will start off the same way because you have two sides to work with right at the very beginning. And then number five finishes slightly different than the rest. With number two in position, three will be joining right in this corner, four will join right in this corner, and so will five. The difference is, is that three and four will also have the overhang of the five boxes like I showed, because it has to go over. And then the fourth box, this overhang, it is actually technically there, but the number two is already in position. So when you go over, you're gonna go right across the whole thing, but not add any more extra to the end of that so that this becomes the complete square. Let's uh, show you how to attach and you're going to apply then three, four, and five then next. With the right side facing up, okay, so it's towards you, you're going to attach right into the corner. And what you wanna do is you wanna attach around this space. So don't actually go right into the anchor, just go right into the space itself. And you're just going to attach. And you wanna go in this direction first. Watch how you do it though. So you're gonna chain, chain uh, um, three. So one, two, and three. Slip stitch between the two sets of boxes. So just slip stitch in. And normally you would have chained six, right, when you're adding a new box. But in this case, because you're attaching, this is how you're doing it. You're then going to attach three, or sorry, you're going to chain up three, and then you're going to put three double crochet into that same chain three space that you just created with the same color. Toss the loose end to the back side of your work, because you're looking at the right side. And once those three are done, you're going to attach it here. Now you need to build up the next set of rows, so you're gonna chain three. Come on up here to the next space, and then flip. So the difference is, is that this time, at least for the first five boxes, that they're attaching to the boxes until we get into the free space up here. So let's flip our work. From experience, what I've learned is that you want to make sure that this slip stitch looks the same as the others. So when you start your chain three, make sure it doesn't look too loose because it'll be really noticeable in the future. You're going to use that space and put your three double crochet in. Flip up and attach and then chain three. And this side is also attaching at the same time. Okay. 
Okay, so come to the next space up, chain three. And how will you know what you have the five boxes? Well, you'll be able to count them, but you'll run out of boxes on this piece right here eventually because it's only five boxes high. So you chain three and three double crochet in, attach, chain three. So you essentially know what you're doing at this point, hopefully. It's hard to know from my desk. I have people email me say, I'm stuck on a pattern, but they have no idea where they tell where they're stuck. They don't tell me where they're stuck. So I'm like, I don't even know what to say. Okay, so we want to build it up. So just treat this like it was the original of this going across. going in between the boxes, flip. Okay, this side is going to attach when we get there. And then you're going to notice that when you chain this three, you're going to go into the anchor spot. And this will be the last time that you're growing it in this height because this will create the fifth box. So Essentially, what you're doing now is that you've been able to get this box to get out to this level. So this will have a nice flat, solid edge the next time you ever circle this blanket. So you can do as many um, circles around the blanket as you want to. So essentially, every time you go around one time, everything squares off again. And then you can decide if you want to go more or less. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is just continue along and when you get to the edge of the white here you want an extra five boxes beyond and then once you have that done you can decrease and then I need you to also do uh, row number um, four, or sorry uh, box rectangle number. So I need you just to go all the way across and when you get to the end of this white here you're going to add another five boxes beyond like I showed you with this color right here and you're going to do the same for uh, rectangle four and then number five I'm just going to have you start and I'm just going to quickly talk about going over the edge because you will not need to um, build out any ledges because it'll already be there and I'll explain that when we get there so please do this now for uh, Bach, our rectangle three four and, and start and do number five and when I get to number five I'll show you um, what I'm going to do for that point and then you can just restart number six, seven, eight, and nine, and continue to go round and round. So I'm on rectangle number five. And so, as I mentioned to you, rectangle number five in the instructions has you going over, but you've already done number two. So this one just starts off at the corner like we had, and then you're going to stop here. So you're not going to add another five once you get beyond here. Once the color changes, just like you see, just pretend it didn't change. And so when you do your last box, here, you are just going to attach to where it's attached together. So just go right around the space like you had been before and carry on. So you can see that the color changing makes absolutely no difference because the spacing is going to be the same and then it joins. So in this one here, once I get to the edge, I'm then going to start and create the final corner. And then when you go to start another round, 
which will be another four rectangles. The rectangles will be longer. I'm still only gonna keep them five boxes high, but if you wanna do more than five boxes high and make it a little more interesting, you can do that. You can decide what works for you. Let me take you back to the diagram. So this video is all about concepts. So five will be done, and then you'll start number six. Now I introduced five colors when I'm doing this, so I actually have six. So I have the cream and then I have five. And the reason for it is that I did not want this color to match any of the three boxes that I have here. So I wanted a fifth color. So this will be a gray that I have not used yet. And then I will change it to something else. And I'm just being mindful that whatever I do across, it doesn't match the other three colors that are there. So it can be really random. Hopefully you don't mind random to some degree. And it's something that you can have fun. You can do the gray here, and but then you can't really use this color that you used here because it'll be attached at this point here. So you may have to jump around with something that you used on this side to bring it over and just keep on just going back and forth. So it's a really neat concept. I hope that you enjoy this. You can add a very simple border. We have borders available here on our channel, the C2C border. Um, there's two different ones, and that's something that you can apply, and you've been seeing it in the different tutorials that we've been running too, of the different concepts uh, for the different yards that we've been playing with. So that's it, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.